All right, hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about perfectionism and how to love the parts of ourselves that feel like we need to be perfect in order to be worthy of love, that feel like we need to be perfect in order to be worthy of safety and compassion and forgiveness and moving forward and that feel like we need to do everything perfect if we are going to get results in life and that can oftentimes feel like if we're not doing everything perfectly, if we're not doing our self-love practices perfectly, if we're not doing our self-care routine perfectly, if we're not doing our relationships perfectly, if we're not doing our diets perfectly, that we may as well just give up because perfection is the only way. And this perfectionism is something that I think a lot of us carry and that many of us don't even recognize that we carry because we consider ourselves to be so imperfect and we consider ourselves to be so not, you know, a type personality or we think that we're unorganized or we think that we're chaotic or we look at our lives and we're like, I couldn't possibly be labeled as a perfectionist because look, I'm not good at anything. I'm not doing anything perfectly. I'm clearly not perfect. Um, I'm clearly not a perfectionist, but we're not recognizing that we do actually have the same kind of perfectionistic um, qualities as someone who would consider themselves to be perfectionistic and that it's ruining our lives in a lot of ways. So that's what I want to talk about today is like how do we love ourselves safe enough to feel like we can be humans who aren't doing everything perfectly and who are never going to be perfect and that we can still be worthy of love, we can still be kind to ourselves, we can still forgive ourselves, we can still take steps, we can still try things, we can still move forward. And I want to talk about the roots of perfectionism and why I think a lot of us are perfectionists and the innocence behind it. And again, so that we can start to work with our perfectionistic tendencies and work with our perfectionistic qualities in a way that's actually helpful instead of trying to just fix them or change them or get rid of them or instead of saying that they're right and we should listen to them and the the fact that we're perfectionistic is real and it's true and it's logical and it's what we should be doing okay so before we get started just like in every other video i'm just going to mention my mystery school and one-on-one -on -one coaching so if you are enjoying this content if you are finding the youtube videos helpful if you're finding the instagram posts helpful if you're finding the blogs that i write helpful and the free content is working for you um, and you want to explore a little bit deeper what i have to offer and how i can support you in learning to have compassion for yourself and learning to not be so hard on yourself and learning to figure out what it is that you want and that you need in order to feel good in your life. Then you can check out my mystery school, which is a, a monthly membership and you can cancel any time and it comes with five courses and they are all included and you get to go through it at your own pace and that includes videos and written work and exercises and all sorts of things and then it also includes a Facebook group where we have community and you can share what you're going through and you can share questions and talk to me and talk to the other people who are going through it. And then of course I have my coaching work, which is not therapy, it is coaching. I am there to help you learn to have compassion for yourself and to, to take these self-love tools to help you process your emotions, to help you figure out what you're actually feeling beyond shame, guilt, and blame to help you figure out what you need and what you want and what works for you in this life and how we can start to take steps towards that. So you can check all of those things out on my website, uh, perceptiontrainers.com. The links are down in either the description of this video if you're watching it on YouTube or in my bio or my link tree if you're on Instagram or Facebook. And that is that. Okay, so perfectionism. Let's talk about where perfectionism tends to come from in most cases, okay? So not everyone is gonna fit into this category, but generally speaking, what I have seen in the people that I've worked with and, and in myself and in just doing research and studying all this stuff, the bottom line kind of 
fundamental reason why we might have perfectionistic tendencies, why we might feel like we need to be perfect in order to be good enough, why we might feel like we are not deserving of love and not deserving of healing and not deserving of any of the things that we need because we're not good enough, or why we might feel like we need to do everything in our lives perfectly, and if we don't execute everything perfectly, that our lives are going to fall apart and nothing's going to work and there's no point in doing it. It is an innocent, self-protective mechanism. Okay, we strive for perfection because we are really truly believing somewhere deep inside that if we do things perfectly and if we are perfect, we can protect ourselves from pain, we can protect ourselves from rejection, we can protect ourselves from experiencing things that don't feel good and that we will then get all the good positive love results that we want. That is what is at the core of perfectionism. We are trying to protect ourselves from pain and we are trying to control ourselves and control our circumstances to a degree where we think we aren't going to suffer anymore. That is usually where perfectionism comes from. I don't want to be in pain and I'm hoping that if I do things perfectly, if I am perfect, that the pain that I am experiencing will go away or that I will not experience pain in the future, okay? And so again, remembering that childhood situation that all of us were in. And this is something, again, that I talk about in pretty much every single one of my videos because I feel like it is something that is so easy to forget and something that is so easy to override and something that a lot of us are not able to like objectively look at our childhoods and see how it applies to our adult situation. I know, especially through my coaching work, that a lot of people have a really, really, really difficult time understanding that their history and what they've been through is the reason why they are doing the things they are doing in their adult life. And there's this disconnect between what happened to us and how we were conditioned and how we were programmed and how we are currently acting. So there's this lack of awareness and lack of capacity to process and to be on our own side and to figure out what we need and figure out what we want and to figure out what's really going on with us because we're, we're really truly believing that the things that we're doing in our adult life are somehow completely separate and organic <laughs> from our childhoods. That they have nothing to do with our history and nothing to do with what we've been through and they're just shitty choices we're making now or weird habits we have or adaptations or whatever it is that have nothing to do with anything that has happened to us previously. And this is really part of why so many people have a hard time having compassion for themselves and being able to see themselves as innocent and, and then being able to find their power and find their steps forward and find healing because they're stuck in this idea that I'm just fucking up my own life for no reason or I just have these maladaptive traits or these things that are wrong with me that are there and happening for no reason and I need to fix myself and so we keep trying to fix something without being able to see where the root actual cause is and therefore it's impossible to fix something when you don't really know why it's there or what's happening or what's causing it, yes? So again, I really want to encourage you to take time to critically think about your childhood experiences and the things that you've been through and to critically think about how they may be connected to your current adult reality. 
And I know that, again, a lot of the time this is really hard because we want to write ourselves off. We want to say, you know, there's no way that there was any form of like abuse or emotional neglect or any kind of anything that happened in my childhood that was that bad to have caused how I am right now. And many of us think, right, we, we use the whole other people have had it so much worse than me. So there's no way that what I went through in my childhood or what I went through in my past is having such a profound effect on my current behavior because it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as bad as other people. It wasn't as bad as X, Y, and Z. It doesn't count. And therefore, again, I must just be broken and I must just be shitty. So when we look at the perfectionistic tendency and we look at the the struggle that a lot of us have with feeling like we're never good enough, feeling like we're never worthy of love, feeling like we can never measure up, feeling like we're never, you know, doing what we should be doing, we're not worthy of love, we're not worthy of respect because we have not been perfect, we have not always been kind, we have not always been innocent, we maybe have hurt other people and we have done things wrong and we have been shitty and therefore we don't deserve love and compassion. We are not innocent the way everyone else is. When we are looking at these tendencies, yes, I really want you to, again, start to understand that you did not just arrive here for no reason. You are not doing the things that you're doing that you can look at and say these are harmful. These are harmful things that I'm doing to myself and others or harmful things that I have done to myself and others. You did not just decide to start doing those things because you're weak or lazy or broken or because you want to hurt yourself or others, right? If we were to just take a step back and really consider why you're doing what you're doing, the things that you see as being not perfect about you, the things that you are doing where you are saying, these are my mistakes, these are the things that are bad and wrong about me right now, these are the things that I'm not doing perfectly right now, these are the things that I have not done perfectly in the past and therefore I cannot forgive myself and I can't have compassion for myself because look, I hurt myself and I hurt others. I'm always going to start with, okay, did you do that? Did, the, did you hurt others? Are you doing what you're doing? Fully knowing that it's going to hurt you and it's going to hurt others. And you're doing it for that reason. That's my always my first question. Are you doing the things that you consider to be harmful? or imperfect because you want to hurt other people or you want to hurt yourself and that is your main intention and a hundred percent of the time I've literally never heard anyone that's like yes that is why I'm doing it I am doing it because I want to hurt myself and I want to hurt others and that is my intention and the reason I say that is because a lot of us treat ourselves as though we are evil. We are bad. We are cheating on our partners or we're engaging in, you know, immature communication. We're binging. We're sitting in front of Netflix for hours and hours a day. We're not um, moving forward in our careers. We're not taking the steps to learn new things. We're not, you know, monetizing our habits. We're not f doing enough self-help and spirituality work, all of these things. And we're saying like, these are the things that are imperfect about me. These are the things that I'm fucking up constantly over and over and over again. And my first question is always, okay, are you doing it because you're wanting to hurt yourself or you're wanting to hurt others? And the answer is always gonna be no. I'm not sitting there being like, today was a great day and I would really like to, you know, fuck it up by hurting myself or hurting others. 
So we can't keep using the hammer on a screw, right? Because most of us react and respond to our imperfection as though we are people who are just choosing to make bad choices for the sake of hurting ourselves or others. We beat ourselves up, we feel guilty, we feel like we don't deserve love, we don't deserve compassion, we don't deserve understanding, we just need to fix ourselves, we just need to change, we just need to be different because who and what we are is not okay, it's not good enough, it's bad, it's wrong, and we're treating ourselves as though we are just people walking around making bad choices, hurting ourselves and others, and that that's it, that's, that's the root cause, that's why we're doing it, and we need to be disciplined, and we need to be shamed, and we need to be blamed, and we need to be guilted into not doing those things anymore. And when we start to do this self-love work, we're going to start to recognize, no, I'm doing these things for a reason. There is a positive intention behind these things. And as harmful as the behavior might be, as, as bad or wrong or imperfect as we might be acting right here, right now, when we really look at the intention behind our actions, we are always going to find that there's an innocent intention. We're cheating because we felt trapped in a relationship we didn't know how to communicate, we felt hurt, and we felt like that was our only power. We felt like we couldn't get out, we felt like we couldn't say what we needed to say. We're in pain on some level, and that's how we're dealing with the pain. We're sitting for hours and hours and hours scrolling our phone and watching Netflix because we're overwhelmed, because work is overwhelming, because relationships are overwhelming, because we have so many things that we're responsible for that we constantly feel shitty about. We feel unsafe in our relationships. We feel like we're not allowed to be ourselves, like we have to be constantly pleasing people and constantly figuring out what other people want and the constant stress of that drives us to needing something to help us just numb out and check out. We're always going to find that there's an innocent reason behind all the imperfect things that we do. We're not going forward in our career and taking steps because we're genuinely, truly afraid we're going to fail. And we're afraid that if we fail, we're going to be judged, we're going to be ridiculed, that there's going to be no hope for us. So we would literally rather not do it at all than risk putting in all that effort and doing the thing and it not going well. And then we might lose love and we might lose connection. We're always going to figure out when we have compassion for these parts of ourselves that are not perfect that are not doing things perfectly, that are hurting ourselves, that are hurting others, that seem to be self-sabotaging, whatever word we want to use. We're always going to find that there's innocence there. That it's how we learn to cope with our fears and our lack of feeling of empowerment around getting the things that we actually want and that we actually need. So how this relates to our childhoods, right? Many of us were never taught how to stand up for ourselves. We weren't taught healthy communication. We weren't taught how to find careers and ways of life that don't overwhelm us. We didn't have a secure connection where we felt like we could be ourselves, we could communicate openly, people communicated openly with us, but rather we had 
homes where everything was under the surface and love came and went or wasn't there at all and we learned how to protect ourselves and defend ourselves instead of being able to communicate openly and now that's what we're doing in our adulthoods. We never learned how to process our emotions, how to be with our big feelings, how to work through them, how to figure out what our big feelings are telling us and what we need to do and be in order to change the circumstances that we're in within the control that we have to make ourselves feel better. We just learned how to numb them out, how to run away from them, or how to blame ourselves. And the biggest thing, again, that we learned in childhood, where the roots of this perfectionism usually came from, is that when I am in pain, it means I am behaving incorrectly. I am doing something wrong. Right? That very first program that all of us got in our childhoods said, caregivers are perfect gods that can provide everything for us anytime we need and anytime we want. And they are our source of secure connection. They are our source of love, of understanding, of empathy, of play, of feeling like we're going to be taken care of and loved and nourished. Those things are all human needs that we need to have met. And they are our source of food, shelter, clothing. And any amount of them pulling away from me or shaming me or blaming me or not liking me, any amount of me being in pain and them not rescuing me from it, the only way we could understand that was to believe that there was something we were doing wrong that was causing them to behave that way. We learned deep in our nervous systems before our frontal lobes were even fully developed that pain equals I am doing something wrong. There's something wrong with me. I need to change myself. That rejection and not having a secure connection means threat to my livelihood. Means I am in an unsafe situation. I am not okay. I am in pain. And therefore I need to fix change, remedy myself in some way in order to earn that secure connection back or to earn it for the first time. That's the water most of us are swimming in. So when we look at ourselves and we say, this is what's bad about me, this is what's bad about me, this is what's bad about me. And if I could just fix these things and change these things and become perfect in all of these ways. What we're really saying is, I am feeling fear. I am feeling insecure. I am feeling unsafe. I am feeling pain somewhere. I'm feeling like I'm not getting my needs met. And I'm trying to find my agency. I'm trying to figure out what am I doing that's causing that pain so I can fix that in myself and make the pain go away? That's why I say perfectionism at its root is the desire to get away from pain and to procure pleasure. And it's the childhood coping mechanism that says, if I perfect myself, Whatever perfection was from our perspective within our childhood home, that I will then have perfect safety, provision, connection, all of those things that I want. And all of the pain and fear and lack will go away. So for some of us, that perfectionism lives in our career and productivity. If we were raised in a household where we did not have a secure connection, 
So we did not have a caregiver or an authority figure that was just unconditionally present for us, that was there for us through our big emotions, that could be that secure, I am here with you, I'm here for you, you're not alone, we're going to figure this out together. We're going to keep you safe. I'm going to meet your needs. If we did not have that, if we felt abandoned by our caregivers, if we felt shamed by our caregivers, if we felt like our caregivers were just not present and we didn't know how to make them present, if they were violent, we learned I'm doing something wrong to cause them to act that way. I am the reason that I am being harmed. We could not understand that our caregivers were separate people from us who didn't have it all together and couldn't figure that all out. We didn't start to figure that out until later. And if we figured that out earlier than we were able to process that, that's a big trauma that a lot of us have to then process through in our adulthood. But we could not understand that. We then just started to try to figure out what the patterns were around their discontent and their pulling away and their judgment of us or their shaming of us or their abandonment of us. And we started looking for what am I doing that's the same every time this happens so I can fix it. Or we were outright told by our caregivers, this is what's wrong with you. This is what's bad about you. Stop doing that. Don't be that way. You have to be like this. Right? So with productivity, if we were raised in a household where we were only celebrated for our productivity accomplishments and it wasn't safe for us to take breaks, it wasn't safe for us to not be constantly doing things. We didn't get love and... and nourishment and support and attention when we weren't doing something. We were going to learn deep in our nervous systems. Every time I don't feel safe, every time I feel abandoned, every time I feel like I don't have a connection that I want to have, I feel lonely, I feel isolated, we're immediately going to be triggered into how am I not doing enough? What should I be doing? How should I be producing something? How should I be working harder? Where am I failing to be perfect in my productivity? If we learned in our bodies by conditioning in our household that it was not okay to have a certain body type, if our caregivers were constantly judging people who are a certain size or a certain weight or a certain color or a certain way of being in their bodies. We were going to learn to vehemently reject and deny any of that within ourselves and to constantly feel like if we're lonely, if we're not feeling connected and we're not feeling safe, I need to fix my body. If I fix my body, I will get the lover, I'll get the friends, I'll get the career, everything will be perfect and everything will come into alignment if I can just have the perfect body. And we will truly deeply believe that. And then we'll feel like I need to perfect my diet and I need to perfect my workout and I need to perfect all of these things and it's never going to feel good enough. Right? And going back to the last example, we'll work on our careers, we'll work on a side hustle, we'll, we'll work ourselves until we're burnt out, and it will never feel like enough. It will never feel like we're perfect. It will never feel like we're doing good enough. And then on the flip side, we may notice that we have a deep resistance to doing things. We consider ourselves to be not a perfectionist because we can't get ourselves to do stuff. We always quit. We always fail. We never actually allow ourselves to take the steps towards doing things. 
and that's sneaky perfectionism. Right? There's that freezing of I don't feel safe, I don't feel connected, I don't feel secure, but I don't want to go out of my way to try and actually do something because what if I fail? What if it doesn't go how I thought it was going to go? Then I'm going to be even more alone. Then I'm going to be even more rejected. I'm going to be even more embarrassed. And then it, this can be, again, one of those things where we're not seeing, we're not able to see what we actually want to do and what actually inspires us and the things that are actually genuinely calling to us because we're so wrapped up in just trying to be and do what we think we should be and do in order to get love based on what was conditioned in us in our childhoods. We're trying to force ourselves to take steps to do this in our career or to do this in our relationships or to do this for our families and we get frozen and we get stuck and we can't take steps or we need or we find ourselves, you know, constantly numbing out and not being able to be productive and not being able to move forward. And it's because we're doing so many things on a day-to-day -day basis that are not what we want to be doing. Because we're so scared that we're not perfect and we're not going to be loved. That we're trying to do what we have been conditioned to do, but we can't motivate ourselves to do it because we don't want to. Or we're trying to do the things we really do want to be doing. But we're so afraid of more rejection, more isolation, more pain. That we can't get ourselves to take steps. And that's that sneaky perfectionism. Right? The perfectionism that comes in and says, unless I can guarantee that this is going to go perfectly. Unless I can guarantee that if I'm going to take a step, it's going to be worth it in this way. It's going to work out in this way. It's going to end up like this. I don't want to do it. And we look at all the ways it could go wrong, and we look for all the ways that it's not worth it, and we give ourselves an excuse not to take steps in life. And we look at ourselves and say, look, look I'm, I'm clearly not a perfectionist. I won't even do anything. Or, I'm not a perfectionist, I'm just a realist. I'm just looking at all the things that could go wrong, and that is my reason for not taking a step, or not trying, or not putting myself out there. And again, it's because we're so afraid of it not going well, and either experiencing the pain of it not going well, experiencing the pain of having put in effort that then doesn't give us the return that we wanted, or that we're gonna try and we're gonna be rejected. We're gonna fail and we're so afraid of what failing means about us. And we're so afraid of what failing means in terms of our relationships. We're going to get criticized. We're going to get judged. People are going to think less of us. That we perfection our way out of it. And then there's that last bit of, you know, I don't deserve love. I don't deserve compassion. I don't deserve to be treated with care or any kind of healing or empathy from anyone because I've not been perfect. I don't deserve to be forgiven. I don't deserve to be loved. I don't deserve to receive any kind of, you know, healing. Because look at all the things I did wrong. Look at all the ways that I fucked up. Look at how imperfect I am. And we literally think, right, like, unless I was this perfect angel of a human being who never did anything wrong, who never hurt anyone else and never hurt myself, I don't deserve love. I don't deserve compassion. 
I don't deserve anyone showing up for me in a coaching situation and having compassion for me. Because look at how shitty I am. And again, all of this boils down to us trying to control our circumstances and control our lives in a way where we will never experience pain. That is where the perfectionism is coming from. We believe if we make ourselves perfect, we will finally experience the secure connection that we've always wanted. And that secure connection will mean feeling safe. At the root of all of this is just wanting to feel safe and connected. Okay? So if we can start to understand that, this is where I say shame and guilt are always lies. So we want to start to recognize and start to unpack our shame and guilt stories. So when we look at ourselves and we say, these are the imperfect things about me. Here are all the ways that I'm failing. Here are all the things that are objectively not okay about me. I'm not productive enough. I'm not successful enough in my career. I don't have the right kind of relationship. I don't have the right body. I'm not perfect in these ways. My question is always okay. What are you making that mean about your life? If you were to never fix these things, what are you afraid is going to happen? And when people actually take the time to look at this, it almost always boils down to, I'm going to be alone forever. If I don't get my career right, no one's ever going to want to be with me. No one's ever going to want to have children with me. If I'm not productive enough, I'm not going to have it all together, and I'm not going to be loved. If I don't perfect my healing path, if I don't heal all of my trauma, if I don't get rid of all of my shadow, If I don't get to a place of perfect mental clarity and emotional regularity and being able to show up for myself perfectly, who's ever going to want to be with me? I'm never going to have friends. I'm never going to have a community because these are all the things that everyone rejects me for. If I don't perfect my body, if I don't become attractive or healed or whatever, I'm never going to get out of pain. I'm never going to be able to pursue the things I want to pursue and to be with the people that I want to be with. I'm never going to be worthy of love. I'm never going to be worthy of the career I want. I'm never going to be worthy of respect. I'm going to be alone and isolated forever. I really want to encourage all of us That when we feel that shame of I'm not perfect, I want to know what you're really feeling. Are you feeling like you just got rejected? Are you feeling lonely? Are you feeling angry or sad about something? in a way that you don't know how to express? Are you telling yourself you shouldn't feel how you feel? Right? Again, a lot of the time, there are deep emotions that we are feeling that we don't know how to give ourselves permission to feel. And rather, we're just trying to fix ourselves 
right? So we feel rejected, we feel abandoned, we feel lonely, and we don't even register that that's what we're feeling. All we know is, I got to fix my body. I got to be more productive. I got it. We feel triggered immediately into our thing that we think we need to fix about ourselves, that we need to make perfect. We don't even recognize that the trigger happened. So in our work with, you know, the mystery school and working one-on-one -on -one with me, I'm always like, okay, so when you felt like you needed to lose weight, when you felt like you needed to be more productive, when you felt like you needed to whatever it is, and you're like, this is what's wrong with me, this is what's not perfect about me, this is the thing I need to fix about me. What triggered that? What were you actually feeling before you decided you need to fix yourself? And again, it's almost always going to be, I was lonely, I was scared, I went through something scary, I went through something that reminded me of something that I've been through that was scary or hard or lonely, I was feeling rejected, I was feeling pain on some level that I didn't know how to fix any other way other than through trying to fix myself. So when you are getting into your perfectionistic tendencies, when you are moving in the direction of saying, I need to fix myself, I need to change myself, this is what's not perfect about me. I want you to ask yourself, what am I really feeling? And what am I really experiencing? If it's not, shame, blame, and guilt. Because again, a lot of us don't even recognize that our perfectionism is shame, blame, and guilt. We're like, no, it's just objectively true. This is the reason people don't like me. This is the reason I am not happy. It's just objectively true. It's not shame, blame, and guilt. But if you're sitting there saying, I am not good enough, I am shitty, these are all the things that are broken about me. These are all the things that are wrong with me that I need to fix before I'm worthy of love, before I'm worthy of safety, before I'm worthy of compassion. That is shame, blame, and guilt. So we're not then identifying what we're actually feeling and therefore what we actually want, right? Because then when we identify, oh, okay, I'm feeling lonely or I'm feeling angry, or I'm feeling like I don't want to have to be doing this. That's when we have some actual power to show up for ourselves. When we can get past the perfectionism of trying to fix ourselves, we can start to get into what you're actually feeling, what you're actually wanting, what you actually need, what you're trying to protect yourself from, and what you're trying to get. So again, what do you think is going to happen if you were to reach that perfection? That can help us figure it out. If you were to perfect your career, if you were to get the perfect partner, if you were to get the perfect body, then what? What do you think is going to happen? And the answer is almost always again. I'll be loved forever. I'll be safe. I'll have provision. If everyone abandons me, I'll at least be able to provide for myself. It'll make whatever pain I'm in go away. And so then again, we can start to say, okay, well, what is that pain? And how can we address it in real life with your real adult capacity? This is why this work is so empowering. Because it takes us out of believing, right? That, so it's kind of like being in a canoe that's filling up with water. And we're fully convinced that the water is coming over the sides and that's why our canoe is filling with water. So we keep bucketing the water out and building up the sides 
hoping that eventually, if we build the sides up high enough, the canoe will float and stop being filled with water. That's what trying to fix ourselves is. We're building up the sides because we're convinced that the water coming in is from coming over the top of the boat. But the real truth is that there's a hole in the bottom of the boat. And that's where the water is coming from. So we can build up the sides all we want and be completely preoccupied with fixing ourselves. And the, bo the boat is just going to continue to fill with water because we're not seeing that the hole is in the bottom of the boat. And that's what needs to be addressed. So when we stop all of this and we start to ask ourselves, what am I really feeling? What's triggering me? What am I actually afraid of? Am I angry? Am I sad? Am I resentful? Do I have these other emotions? That's when we can start to look for the hole at the bottom of the boat. And then we can address the hole at the bottom of the boat. And that's actually going to stop the water. What do you actually need? What do you actually want? Right? When we're going into our look at how imperfect I am with my coping, numbing, self-sabotaging behaviors. I'm not taking steps. I'm not being proactive. I'm not moving forward in my career. I'm spending all this time just numbing out in front of the TV. Okay? What are you actually feeling? If you're not taking steps and you're not doing it perfectly, why not? Are you too afraid that if it doesn't go perfectly, your life is over? Are you afraid that if it doesn't go perfectly, you're going to get judged and rejected and hurt? Are you afraid that if you take a step and you don't know what you're doing, you're just going to be criticized instead of helped? Are you afraid that putting in the effort might lead you somewhere worse than where you are right now, so you may as well just stay where you are? Are you spending all of your time and all of your day feeling exhausted at a job that you don't like? Or in relationships where you feel like you have to be and do what they want you to be and do, and so you're constantly walking on eggshells, and so by the time you get home, you're just exhausted, and all you want to do is nothing? What are you actually feeling? Are you angry or resentful towards someone or something and you don't know how to express that? Are you lonely? Are you sad? And you don't know how to process that? How are your coping and numbing and self-sabotaging behaviors helping you? Because it's not that you're just not perfect and not doing it perfect. And if you could just perfect these things, your life would be amazing. There's something deeper going on. And again, right, if we were to take the coping mechanism away, if we were to take that self-sabotaging behavior away and force you to no longer be in front of Netflix and force you to never do these things ever again, you're not going to just feel amazing. Instead, all the stuff that you're running from and all of the real emotions and everything that's under that is going to come to the surface. It's going to become obvious. You're going to feel it. You're going to have no escape. And if you don't have tools to deal with it, you're not going to feel better. You see? And lastly, again, that whole idea that, like, while well, I'm not deserving of love or compassion or support because I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. I've hurt people. I've done things wrong. This feeling that we do not deserve love and compassion because we haven't been perfect. That's a way that we have learned to punish ourselves. Right? Cutting ourselves off from that love is something we learn to do. 
And on the one hand, a lot of the time, again, it can stop us from feeling the pain of what we have experienced. I know that for a lot of people, the idea that I wasn't perfect and I'm not that good and therefore I'm not worthy of love, this is a way that people escape feeling sad for themselves, feeling angry, being upset about what they went through. It's how they invalidate their own feelings. Yeah, well, I'm not that good either. Right? Maybe I'm starting to feel sad about how my caregivers treated me. Maybe I'm starting to feel sorry for myself. Maybe I'm starting to have some anger. And instead of allowing ourselves to go in that direction to actually process that, we say, well, yeah, well, I wasn't that perfect. At it. And we we're trying to shut it off. We're trying to escape from the things that we actually feel and that we need to process through by invalidating ourselves, by saying we're not perfect and we didn't do everything perfect. It's a sneaky way of invalidating ourselves so that we don't have to feel the pain and the sadness of what we've been through. So next time you notice yourself saying, yeah, well, I don't deserve love. I don't deserve compassion. I don't deserve forgiveness. Because I failed and I'm shitty and I haven't been good and I haven't been perfect. I want to ask you, what pain were you feeling before you decided to write yourself off like that? What emotion have you been running from? Are you trying to invalidate in yourself by saying, well, I'm not perfect and therefore I don't need to feel this and I don't need help and I don't need love. Right? Self-protection. That is what perfection is. And again, right, there, there's this idea too that we're telling ourselves if I keep blaming myself and if I keep shaming myself and if I keep reminding myself of my imperfections, that's how I'm going to stop myself from doing it in the future. That's the other big thing with perfectionism is we truly believe that if we just kick our own ass hard enough, if we just keep reminding ourselves of our failures and we just keep reminding ourselves of how badly we've messed up, and how imperfect we are, that that's going to motivate us to change. That if we let ourselves off the hook, if we forgive ourselves, that that's like saying, it's okay that I did what I did, it's okay that I'm shitty, and I'm just going to let myself be shitty for the rest of my life. But that's not what self-forgiveness is about. Self-forgiveness is the process of, again, learning to understand why we did what we did. Why did we cause that harm? Why did we hurt ourselves and why did we hurt others? What was the innocence behind it? I didn't know how else to communicate. I didn't know how else to get my needs met. I didn't know what else to do. I felt scared, I felt trapped, I felt alone. And I didn't know how to handle that. That's always what we're going to find when we look at why we actually did what we did that hurt ourselves or others. And the self-forgiveness is about saying, okay, I didn't do it because I'm shitty. I didn't do it because I'm purposefully horrible. I did it because I didn't know what else to do. And now the empowerment step is, what do I need to learn so that I don't have to keep making that choice? Where do I need to learn communication tools? Where do I need to learn how to heal my, you know, attachment style? Where do I need tools for getting my needs met and understanding myself? Because that's always going to be the thing that actually creates change. We're never going to change just because we blamed ourselves enough. Because we held our mistake over our head long enough. That's never going to motivate us to be different. That perfectionism 
only makes us more afraid and it makes us feel less secure and it leads to less understanding. We need to say, okay, no, why did I do it? And what do I need in terms of support to be able to do something different in the future? It's always going to come down to supporting yourself versus trying to fix or change yourself. So all the parts of you that are trying to convince you that you have to be perfect before you're worthy of love, they're just trying to protect you. And so hopefully through this video, I've given you some tools and some things to look at and some questions to ask yourself to help you figure out what's really going on and what you really need. What are you trying to protect yourself from and what are you trying to get through your perfectionism? What's the actual root there? Where did you learn that you had to be perfect before anyone would love you? Can you grieve that? Can you be upset that you didn't have a secure connection where you could be yourself and make mistakes and still be safe and loved? There is so much here, right? So this is not meant to be a all-encompassing video of like how to get rid of perfectionism, but I hope that you can start to see that it, it has its roots in a place that's deeper than just you're fucking up and you need to fix yourself and you need to hold your mistakes over your own head as long as possible in the hopes that you'll change because that's not reality okay perfectionism is your attempt at trying to keep yourself safe it's trying to help you pro get away from pain emotional mental spiritual physical and to have pleasure that's where it comes from. That's the root. So what do you need to be supported? That's the work we do here. Okay? So if you have any questions or comments or concerns, you can leave them in the wherever you're watching this. <laughs> if you have any video suggestions I'd love to hear, anything you want to share, I want to hear. And until next week, have a fantastic week, have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, wherever you're watching from. And I will see you later.